Okay, what we have here, besides a colossal mess of wiring, is I have my two banks of capacitors that I've been getting ready to put in the car, and this is the third bank I have that I'm using for a different project, but what I wanted to see is if I could get the discharge curve with a bank of three capacitors in here and see how much it changes from the battery. So the measurements that we're going to be taking is I'm actually measuring the actual voltage right at the capacitor bank. I'm taking the exact same measurement at the battery terminals that I was before and it's going to have the same current shunt. What I'm guessing I'm going to find is that instead of it dropping down to that ten and a half volt area and steadily turning over with this relatively steady amp load is that it's going to actually start at a higher voltage and come down probably linearly with the capacitors discharging. So we're at about 30 degrees here. The capacitor bank is charged up to over 15 volts because I have a smaller bank and I want to be able to actually get some data points hopefully there will be enough capacitance that I can actually get a curve out of it and using the same data acquisition system. Okay, So we can see we have 15.3 volts at the battery terminal and we have 15.3 volts at the capacitor. Since there's no load on the system that's pretty much what we should expect. You can see we turn it over and under no load we're down to 7.7 .7 volts. So after taking that data I downloaded it to the computer and I actually plotted it against the data that I had got in part one of this series which was the battery turning the engine over to see the difference of having a battery or a capacitor bank will have on the starting. The first one that I have shown here is the actual voltage measurement during the starting process. This zero point is right when the motor starts to turn over. In yellow here you can see that this is the actual battery voltage when I was turning it over from the part one video. The capacitor bank initially will allow for a higher voltage because it has a lower internal resistance so it will hold its voltage and then will dramatically start dropping in voltage. The capacitors that I have are undersized so that's why after two seconds you can see that I've dropped down to just above nine volts already. When you take and log the amperage of both of the two systems and put them over the top of each other you can actually find some interesting things. The battery voltage initially has a very high current and that's going to be from the inrush current of the electric motor starting up to turn the engine over. The capacitor will do the same thing, but because the capacitor for this first second and a half here will actually hold the voltage higher, you'll see that these pulses of current are closer together. This is probably going to be because this is actually every time the engine turns over. So this is going to be directly related to the RPMs would be my guess. The battery though will basically settle down and will have a constant pulsing turning the motor over at a constant RPM throughout the cranking process which is shown in green here. So from this information we can see that initially when you go to turn over the engine by using the capacitors there's actually a better chance that the engine is going to fire faster because it's spinning at a higher RPM. But if it doesn't start in the initial time period where the voltage is higher than the battery when you go back to try to start it a second time if you don't get it to successfully start 
you're going to progressively have it turning over slower and slower until you run out of enough power in the capacitor bank in which case it won't turn over at all. The last thing that I data logged here was the watts of power being used which basically demonstrates where I was using a model before of a constant power load um, coming from the battery that technically it's not going to be correct once you use the capacitors because it's going to start out and actually use more power out of the bank initially and as the voltage drops it'll actually start coming down below that. For a ballpark calculation to size the bank of capacitors it'll probably work just fine but technically because it's not going to behave the same the calculations will be skewed. Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you found any errors in anything I said, please leave a comment and thank you for watching.